This podcast is brought to you by Progressive. Most of you aren't just listening right now. You're driving, cleaning, and even exercising. But what if you could be saving money by switching to Progressive? Drivers who save by switching save nearly $700 on average, and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Multitask right now. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $698 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Welcome to Mom and Daughter Fighting, Slate's parenting podcast for Monday, January 23rd. The no, you can't marry your mom edition. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the homeschool and family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom to three littles, Henry, who's 10, Oliver, who's eight, and Teddy, who's six. We live in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm Jamila Lemieux, a writer, contributor to Slate's Care and Feeding Parenting column, and mom to Naima, who's nine and three quarters, and we live in Los Angeles. I'm Zach Rosen. I make a different show. It's called The Best Advice Show, and I live in Detroit with my family. My oldest, Noah, is five, and my youngest, Ami, is two. Well, today on the show, we're going to be talking about a princess-obsessed little girl who keeps proposing to her mom. The mom finds it sweet, but is really struggling to explain that wedding bells are most certainly not in their future. We're also going to do a round of recommendations where we tell you what we're loving right now, and then we'll wrap up the show by digging into a particularly spicy mailbag. (laughs) See you back here in a second. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep. When you're listening, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy and you could save money by doing it right now from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $700 on average. And auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $698 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. It's hard to stick with working out. I haven't had a viable exercise routine where I'm actually doing something multiple times a week until very recently, like the last six months or so. And truly, honestly, I owe it all to Peloton. Multiple times a week, I'm doing these amazing Peloton floor exercises. Just this morning, I was working on my core. I only had 10 minutes, so I chose a 10-minute workout, and I felt so good for having done it before getting my workday started. Peloton offers thousands of on-demand classes available 24-7. That means you can work out whenever and wherever it's convenient for you. You don't have to be a super athlete to enjoy Peloton because there are classes for every level. Whether you exercise daily or you're new to working out, Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. Try Peloton risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. We're back and ready to hear our listener question, which is being read by the wonderful Shasha Leonard. Hi, Mom and Dad. I'm the mother to a newly five-year-old daughter who is all in on princess culture. She has mentioned to me a few times how she would like to marry me. I gently try to tell her that she can marry anyone she likes when she's older, but not her parents, or grandparents, or aunts, or uncles. But then I'm out of what to say to her. Any ideas? What is appropriate at this age? Thanks. Queen Mum. I think at five, your daughter's old enough to hear about the different types of love that exists. There's the love that we have for our family, for our mom and dad, for our grandparents and aunts and uncles, you know, and these are people that are connected to us through the relationship of family. 
because for some people that's blood, some people that's not blood, but it's, you Mm -hmm. know, a specific kind of relationship. It's just your family. These people are, you know, to take care of you and to love you throughout your life. And you didn't choose them, you know? Uh, And then there's a type of love we have for friends when we meet somebody at school or in the park and we really like them and we want to hang out with them and we decide that they, you know, we want them to be our friend. You can end up loving them and caring very deeply about them and wanting to help them and support them and be by their side. But it's different from what you have for your family. You know, your family was chosen for you and your family, you know, when you're a child has a responsibility to protect you and to take care of you. And then as you get older, there's romantic love. And it's when you get these special butterflies in your tummy and you meet one particular person, regardless of what their gender may be. And you want to spend your time with them. You want to go on dates. You want to hold hands and be affectionate. Um, And perhaps if you're old enough, you'll want to get married and start a family of your own. Um, And that's a very different type of love than what we have for our family members. And the two cannot be combined. You know, no matter how much you love your mom or your aunt or your grandfather, you just simply can't. It's against the law. It's weird. It's just not what people do. And that's okay. And that there are lots of ways that she can express her love for her mother. She can give hugs and kisses. She can draw her pictures. They can play games together. There's no limit to the ways that you can love Uh, or show your love for your mother. Well, I guess there is a limit. The limit would be getting into a romantic (laughs) relationship with her. Um, But that, you know, all of these forms of love are very special and important and can have a role in your life, but that they're not to be confused with one another. Like you were saying, which is something I've actually said to, to Noah, where she's talked about marrying her brother. And it's like a similarity between marriage and what we have is that we are going to love you for the rest of our life just like you know hopefully perhaps your your partner will and so i think a lot of kids conflate marriage and love and just just untangling that idea that you know marriage is this kind of uh agreement i mean it's a i don't think you have to get into the the legal issues around it that's how i explain it i'm like yeah marriage is a legal binding (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's probably helpful. That's probably helpful to say it like that. We have gone through phases where at this age, all of the boys, you know, would say, oh, I want to marry you. And one, I would just take that to mean they just they love me a lot and they're exploring this. So so saying to them something like, well, I'm going to love you forever or like my love for you is never going away because because to me, that's kind of what they're trying to express. Right. And then maybe because I'm like not a romantic, maybe it's because, you know, the legal background, I'm just like, marriage is a legal binding. It is something you decide to do with someone else for particular purposes. Yes, it has stuff to do with love, but in some cases it is, you know, you can love a bunch of people and decide this is the partnership I want to be in. Um, And that Mm. that part is marriage, right? We don't need marriage because I'm your mom. And this is our relationship, and it was defined. It's just defined by this relationship of me loving and caring for you, and providing for you, and you, you know, being being mine. In that sense, and I, I do want to talk about a little bit, and I'm going to look to you guys for guidance on this. Is like Hmm. she talks about this princess culture, and I'm wondering if that's kind of where things are getting complicated like if her daughter is kind of obsessed with this idea of princesses and getting married what do you guys think about about that dealing with a kid who is all into like all in on the princess thing you definitely want to talk to them about um the difference between princesses as they exist in pop culture and real life you know, that there are parts of the world where there are monarchies and there are kings and queens and princesses. Mm. Um, But even for them, life is generally very different than what you would see in a Disney movie. Uh, But that in some of our storybooks and movies, there's this idea of a handsome prince coming along and saving a woman or sweeping her off her feet and just giving her this life that's so magical 
and privileged. And that's not what marriage typically looks like for people um, that, you know, a princess is a fun thing to be for Halloween, but not something to aspire to in your real life. I did just do a quick Google and found this that National Geographic put out a book for kids called The Book of Queens, Legendary Ooh. Leaders, Fierce Females, and Wonder Women Who Ruled the World. Um, and so that sounds like a that might be a, a cool way to kind of demystify and, and complicate the narratives around princesses and queens. I actually might get that for Noah. Hmm. Well, Queen Mom, we hope this helps. We would love to know how it goes. So please keep us posted by emailing us at slate.com. That's also, of course, where you can send us any questions of your own. We're going to take another quick break and then join you back here for recommendations and our mailbag. Support for this podcast comes from WISE, the universal account that lets you send, spend, and receive money internationally. With one account for over 50 currencies, who exactly is WISE made for? It's made for jet setters and slow travelers, for seeing old friends in new places. WISE is made for business in the city and pleasure on the coast, for studying abroad and supporting your little brother's schooling back home. WISE is made for people without borders who want to live truly global lives with ease. You see, with WISE, you always get the mid-market exchange rate whenever you convert or spend different currencies. There are no markups and no hidden fees. That's pounds to pesos, dollars to dong, just like that. Helping you save on currency conversion wherever your money takes you. Wise, it's the account that's made for the world. Join 13 million customers and learn how the Wise account could work for you at wise.com slash slate. Hey everybody, it's Tim Heidecker. You know me, Tim and Eric, bridesmaids and uh, Fantastic Four. I'd like to personally invite you to listen to Office Hours Live with me and my co-hosts, DJ Doug Pound. Hello. And Vic Berger. Howdy. Every week we bring you laughs, fun, games, and lots of other surprises. It's live. We take your Zoom calls. Music. We love having fun. Excuse me? Songs. Vic said something. Music. Songs. Music. I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. Please subscribe now. All right. It's finally time for recommendations. Jamila, what are you recommending? I am so happy to recommend Dan Coyce's book, Vintage Contemporaries. It is officially out now. It's a really sweet novel about friends coming of age, coming to terms with who they are, uh, new parenthood, career. It's just really, really sweet. Dan left a nice little Easter egg in there for me. I won't spoil it for you. Um, but it's Whoa, just a really that's cool. Yeah, it's a really sweet book and it is available now. So let's make Dan a New York Times bestseller. You guys go get vintage contemporaries. Will we be able to tell what the Easter egg is or is it yeah. like an audience of one? Yeah, no, you'll be able to tell. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Zach, what are you recommending? So we were over at our friend's house the other day and Noah scraped her foot pretty badly on their uh, like their radiator and, and was crying and crying. And then our friends busted out like the most beautiful first aid kit I had ever seen. And it totally transfixed Noah and got her to stop thinking about whatever pain she was in and instead to focus on like the pages and pages of different patterned band-aids and a bunch of other things in there. And it's from the people at keep going. So it's called, if you Google keep going first aid kit, first of all, there's like a bunch of different cases with cool designs from like sunny rainbow to flamingo, to tie dye, to sports, to wild side, to stem to blue camo. So like just the, the, container for the for the first aid kit itself is like really beautiful but then inside it's like the most awesome um mix of like stickers and band-aids and safety pins and antibiotic ointments but it's like it's so not just like basic sterile first aid kit it's this thing that your kid would be super excited about it's 30 dollars. i don't think i would i could actually justify buying it for our house though i think it would be a really cute gift for someone and i'm telling you like that the distractibility of it really helped Noah um, move on from her pain pretty quickly in a way that I think just like a boring old beige band-aid wouldn't have. So this first aid go kit, the prettiest first aid kit I've ever seen. I love a good looking band-aid. <laughs> right? 
I mean, I'm such a sucker for a good first aid kit and a good a band aid that makes kids excited to put it on. And mm-hmm. um, I am recommending a very fun and informative book called Help Your Kids with Adolescence from DK. And this is actually Help Your Kids With is like a whole series. And I would describe it kind of as like a a visual encyclopedia. They have like Help Your Kids with Math, Help Your Kids with Science. And I've used them in homeschooling. I came across the Help Your Kids with Adolescence at the library, picked it up and then purchased one for the house because I think it is like a great strewing book. So strewing is like where I leave things in places for the kids to discover on their own and look through and ask questions. And so for this, like I set it kind of over by the couch. And then when we had our quiet reading time, the kids were happy to pick it up. It's full of these great color illustrations. It's about a two page spread on each kind of like puberty or adolescent topic. It doesn't go into terrible detail, but it is where, you know, Henry's about to turn 11. This is kind of a good opportunity for him to read some stuff and start forming some questions. We've been doing this with other books, but it's just like so cute. Like I I have it here. Here's a two page spread of what is puberty? And it kind of just explains some things. It has pages on everything from cyberbullying to money matters, stress. There's a page on eating disorders, just kind of giving them some of the words and language and things to look at. And Henry's had some really great questions. And I've learned a thing or two um, by the little diagrams and looking stuff up. So if you're looking for something to just kind of start that conversation or let your kid explore on their own, I'm I'm really liking Help Your Kids with Adolescence. Sweet. Very cool. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up today with some amazing mailbag letters. So last week on Slate Plus, we were discussing trends that we'd like to see bite the dust in 2023. Zach, do you want to remind us what you (laughs) wished was on the chopping block? (laughs) I came out strong for the elimination of holiday cards, not because I don't like them, but because it makes me feel insufficient as someone who just can't get their shit together to, to make a holiday card. I, I said it in jest, but um, I knew that I, I would probably get some pushback. And indeed, we did, right? Like, pretty soon after we posted the episode, we got <laughs> yeah, some people like, defending. Yeah, like, moments. I knew I knew it had been posted because the inbox <laughs> started to fill with um, some of you sent us your holiday cards <laughs> to prove to us how cute. And they you, were. And they were very cute. They are, Yes. <laughs> We forwarded each and every letter to Zach. Yes. And I think you responded. I think he actually responded to everybody. Um, I did. I, I really loved getting this this feedback. But um, we wanted to share some of those letters with yeah. you. Um, so here's what we've gotten in response. Happy holidays, whether you like it or not. That's right. My kids are 17 and 19, and we still send holiday cards. We're not on Facebook, and a lot of people aren't on IG. We always use a picture that no one's seen, and I don't know anyone who doesn't like getting mail. Love the show, even though you don't send cards. Smiley face. Yeah, I mean, this point that that they make here that they are not on Facebook, um, and a lot of other people aren't on Instagram, is totally valid. And, like, if you are in the rarefied world of not being on social media, first of all, good for you, because it's pretty much a waste of time. Then a holiday card is, like, a breath of fresh air and totally great, because you haven't seen these these kids or these families um, since last year in many cases. So in that, I mean, in that context, I totally, I totally support that. We also got this one. I love to see cards for those who choose to send and care not at all that some folks have never sent me a card. I use double-sided tape to attach a piece of wide ribbon on a cabinet end and I pin the cards to it. Same ribbon for a decade. I pack the ribbon away with the cards, so next year I see the previous year's cards as I put the ribbon back up. In years when an old card is from someone who has since died, or where the kids have seemingly doubled in height, they are treasures. And then I recycle them. Send or don't send yours. Enjoy or trash mine. Change your friend group or just enjoy a private laugh and then extend grace to people who use crazy professional pics. But bless your hearts. Release yourself from card anxiety. Largely, Zach, this... This letter writer is telling you, stop worrying about whether you <laughs> sent them or not. Thank it's, you. Appreciate the ones you get mm-hmm. and don't don't spend another moment worrying about that you didn't send them out. Amen. And finally, we got an update from a listener from just a few weeks back. Thanks for answering my question. I'm the bitchy non-parent who judges. I was delighted that you took my question. 
Your advice was spot on and more something I needed to hear rather than something I didn't already know. It was also good to be reminded how harshly society judges mothers and how I fell into that trap myself because this particular mother had annoyed me so much over a 48 hour period. What I really needed was a chance to bitch to some friends about it. And you gave it to me. I really love puttering around the kitchen on Tuesday and Friday mornings with my coffee and my friends, aka you. Also, regarding responses to banishing Christmas letters, Jamila, I can't believe you described your family as hanging by a thread. I think your family sounds great, and I admire the child-centered way you go about co-parenting without, I think, I hope, neglecting yourself. But maybe I'm biased because you are so pro-therapist. Love you all. I really, really appreciate that. You know, the girl Jamila's having a difficult time lately. I would just ask you all to keep me in your thoughts and prayers. It's rough, you know, um, being on a show where you're giving advice can kind of sometimes make it seem like you've got everything together and everything's okay. But, you know, the reality of parenting and single parenting um is challenging for me. So I do sometimes feel like I'm hanging on by a thread, but I really appreciate those kind words. I feel you. I feel you, Jamila. Ugh. Yeah. I'm so sorry that it's you're going through a hard time. Thanks guys. And we're here and we're here if you want to talk about it Thank on you. or off the mic. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Well, thank you as always for the letters. Please keep them coming. We love to hear from you. And that's it for the show. This episode of Mom and Daughter Fighting is produced by Rosemary Belson and Maura Curry. Alicia Montgomery is VP of Slate Audio. For Jamila Lemieux and Zach Rosen, I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. Thanks for listening. It's hard to stick with working out. But with a variety of products and classes, Peloton makes finding the motivation easy. Peloton has the best playlists and tons of different music genres. Whether you're in the mood for a 90s pop ride or a soulful power walk, Peloton's got you covered. And whether you exercise daily or you're new to working out, Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. Try Peloton risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial.